the voice of Pentecost.
saints, I'm just going to have to say a few words to you extemporaneously. You know that I'm not the same J. O. Patterson I was last year. And you may not be the same you. Comes another convocation. But I would hope that God would do anything through my illness that he would bring this church back to old time holiness. of old holiness that caused people to call us fanatics and said we were crazy and didn't have good sense. Yes, sir. I would trust that God would through my illness clean up the church's political ambition. And help us to realize that we are on our way hastily to the judgment. There will be no positions up there. Chairman of no boards. No state mothers. No bishops, nothing but servants. I saw an ad in the paper just on yesterday. I'd never seen that kind of ad, at least was read to me. And this couple had advertised for an old fashioned, I believe it was Presbyterian church. They wanted to find one that preached the gospel with simplicity and believed in the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost and believed in ladies wearing their dresses modest and men acting like they are members of the masculine gender. You know, the newspaper says that they haven't found one yet. It's an indictment on somebody. It is an indictment on America, the world, and the Church of God in Christ. Yes, sir. That one million five hundred thousand babies are legally murdered every year. Babies that don't have the chance that a common criminal has. He can't be sentenced to death without an automatic appeal. Yes, sir. And then oftentimes the governor stays the execution. But those poor babies don't even have a lawyer to plead their case. One million five hundred thousand at least a year are being legally murdered. Medical science is trying to say and prove that it's not a human life. I don't care what medical science says. God said that he ordained the fella while he was still in his mother's womb. He had an ordination service. 
knew him before he was formed in the belly and ordained him a prophet while he was still in his mother's womb. God's going to judge us. God's going to judge us. I was looking at television at some of the devil worshippers, preachers and missionaries, we'd better wake up and see what's going on around us. Devil worshippers killing animals, and I'm talking about not old people, but little children, 14 and 15 years old, killing pigs, dogs, and other smaller animals. And one boy said that he quit because he was to sacrifice a kidnap and sacrifice a human baby. And they kill them and put the blood in a bowl and pass it around among them and they drink it as their pledge to the devil. We're in trouble. Yes, sir. When little 14 year old girls are becoming mothers, we're in trouble. When a little 16 year old, a six year old girl, six year old girl, give birth to triplets, six years old, we are in trouble. I don't know when or whether I'll have the opportunity of speaking to you people again. But I think I need to leave a testimony with you. We've gotten too proud. We've gotten our priorities in the wrong place. We're worshiping hats and wigs. We're worshiping Lure Ross suits. Johnson Murphy shoes, Cadillacs and Lincolns, and some of our cars look like a pimp mobile. That's too vain, that's too vain. That's too vain. Preacher haven't got any business riding around in the car and the police following him because he looked like a member of the Mafia. We ought to dress like preachers. Act like preachers. Talk like preachers. Walk like preachers. God is going to judge us. Missionaries, don't let anybody deceive you. You don't have to go around looking like Zsa Zsa Gabor. God has given you natural beauty. And without any Lipstick. <laughs> like that worn by the proverbial Jersey Bell. God made you to look beautiful. Well, <laughs> Is God going to send me to hell for reading in my lips? I'm not trying to say God's going to send you there. But you're going to call so many other folk to go. 
because the other people believe that true holiness changes your dressing appearance. I'm sick and tired of these folk being like that old mangy dog the boy had on the sidewalk. And a fellow walked up to him and said, boy, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You need to get this dog treated. So this dog's in bad shape with all of the, these mangy infections. The boy said, what are you talking about? Said, this is a police dog. The man said, you know that's not a police dog. He said, it is a police dog. He said, well, how in the world can a dog in that condition be a police dog? He said, well, because he's, in, he's an undercover agent. I don't think we need any undercover agents in the Church of God in Christ. I think we ought to look like what we are. Brother pastors, they're recording this, you have it. We don't have to try to imitate the theaters and the movie stars to have service. Someone was telling me about one of our groups. Bless you back there, Sister Mary Clark. Bless you, baby. Bless you. This is Sarah Jordan Powell, Yvonne Whitney, bless all of you back there with the Department of Music. I appreciate you. We're just the orchestra, we're just simply trying to make room for more people who want to serve. But you know, it breaks my heart. And you don't have to bawl me out about it because that won't help. But it breaks my heart to see people who are steeped in the religion and the doctrine of the Church of God in Christ have to go to the stage and act like the world to make a dollar. And it breaks my heart to hear some of our singers say that we have got to communicate with the society in which we live and therefore we have to rearrange our music and make it contemporary and put a little beat to it there to, so they'll understand it that's not what the Bible says the Bible says, be not conformed to this word, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. God didn't tell me to be like the world. He said that I was the salt of the earth. And when I was a boy in the country, my father would kill hogs, hang them out overnight, he said, and let the animal heat get out of them. And then he'd put them in a box, put a layer of coarse salt down, then a layer of meat, cover that meat with some more salt, rub it in, thank you, sir, you old hog raiser, you. And when my daddy got through, it could be hot in the summertime, 
you could take a piece of that meat out and it would be sanctified down to the bone. And I never one time heard anybody say this salt tastes meaty. They always said the meat tasted salty. If we are to save this world, we have got to be examples to the world. I wonder, did you hear me? I wonder, did you hear me? No, I don't approve, I don't have. Don't come in the church where I pastor with a lot of worldly songs and calling the Lord, oh my Lordy Lord. He is not Lordy. To call him Lordy is about like calling somebody buddy boy. The Lord God is his name. And his name should be reverence. His name is Holy. No Lordy Lordy. Bishop Washington said something in his sermon. I've thought about it, I've thought about it. I have his tape and I played it. He said that he went by a church and the people were standing in the door. And he stopped his car and went over. And the preacher, I believe it was, was playing the guitar. And he was picking his guitar and the people were jumping and hollering and shouting. And the fellows were standing in the doorway and up and down the aisle with the hats on. Some near the door was smoking. And he said he hollered, stop the music, stop the music, stop the music. He said if you play the right music, these men will take their hats off. You play the right music, they'll stop smoking. I dare you to play how sweet the name of Jesus sounds in a believer's ear. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can't smoke on that song. You can't smoke on Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. You can't smoke on that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Brothers and sisters, Timothy did say, or Paul did say to Timothy, take a little wine for your stomach's sake. First place, your name not Timothy. And the second place, wine doesn't smell like gin. I don't care how we try to justify it. If you're going to lead people, you've got to carry yourself in such a way that people will respect you. Sin has always gotten the church in trouble. And sin's what's getting us in trouble. I'm about finished. Thank you, baby, that's all I can do now. Apostle Paul had a problem preachers with this Corinthian church. Apostle Paul had a problem with this Corinthian church. And listen to what Paul says to the Corinthian church. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you 
and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. And ye are puffed up in sin and proud of it and have not rather mourned that he that has done this deed might be taken away from among you. You're talking about getting a judicial court. These courts we already have are not working. Somebody ought to be able to say what's right and what's wrong. And splitting jurisdictions is not correcting wrong. For verily, for I verily as absent in body, but present in spirit have judged already as though I were present concerning him that has done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together, and my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such an one unto Satan for destruction of the flesh. Yes, sir. Your glory is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Don't you know that to keep sin in the church, known sin, is a bad influence for the church? Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened, for even Christ our Passover is sanctified for us. Therefore let us keep the feast not with old leaven, with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators. Yet not altogether with fornicators of the world or with the covetous or the extortionists or with idolaters. For them must ye needs go out of the world. But now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner with such a one know not to eat. For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within, but them that are without God judges. Therefore put away from among you, put away from among yourself that wicked person. Yes, sir. That's what the Bible says. I know that we sometimes say we have to let God do the judging. My dears and sirs, there's really nothing to judge when you see outward sin. And the world is beginning to ask now, where do we draw the line? I know at one time everything was wrong. Wrong to wear a necktie. Wrong to wear eyeglasses. Wrong to have your dental work done. That's what everything was wrong. And maybe we were a little fanatical. But what's worse? For 
for everything to be wrong or for not anything to be wrong. There has got to be wrong somewhere. Right, Bishop. God, I wish I felt better. I wish I felt better. Here's an old man, 64 years old, and had been living with his old male lady 40 years. He was 64 years old, and the other male was 40, 72 years old. And they're celebrating because their state now has legalized them being married. Yes, sir. That's nothing funny. I said that's nothing funny. Yes, sir. Legalize them being married. Yes, sir. Don't tell me now. Don't tell me that this is all right. Don't tell me it's right because I'm not going to believe you. God put us here to replenish the earth. And two males can't replenish the earth. God made Adam, and I know I'm hitting somebody now because you're looking at me too mean. God made Adam and Eve. He did not make Adam and Steve. He didn't do it. And the only thing going to help us as I conclude, the only thing going to help us is wholesale repentance. And this is no indictment, and, and yet it could be. But the Lord's will, in January, we're planning on going to Birmingham. Yes, sir. Where there won't be any board of bishops meetings. No, sir. No, sir. And no state mothers meetings. No, sir. And the council won't be meeting. No, sir. And the general assembly won't be meeting. No, sir. Or nothing be meeting but the prayer meeting. And I know I'm not being rude, but, I'm, but you know, if you got a leader, the leader can't get anywhere unless somebody follows. A leader without followers is just a man what? Taking a walk. I realize that all of these other things have got to operate. Council of Elders, the General Assembly, and Women's Department, Young People's Department, I realize all that's got to operate. I realize you've got to have some business meeting. But is it asking too much to do all of our business of that nature in April? And let this be a holy convocation. How can you have a holy convocation when just a, a skeleton group of laymen are in the auditorium and the leaders are off in different rooms having meetings? You've got to lead people back to God. Brothers, think about it. Yes, sir. Give us November as a holy convocation. People come here to be healed. Yes, sir. I need a touch from the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. People come here, I said to be healed. Folk all over the country are saying, if I can just make it to Memphis. 
Like Apostle Paul said, I must by all means keep the feast at Jerusalem. Woman, a preacher called me just before I left home. Yes, sir. One of our sisters, sick. But she wanted to come to the convocation. Put her in the hospital yesterday. Huh? She died from Indiana. Oh, I wonder. Say it, Bishop. I wonder. Say it, Bishop. I just wonder say it, say it. if all of us bishops had been Bishop, in it, here it, during the meeting. If all of us bishops had been in here instead of rooms holding business sessions, if we'd been in here doing the meeting, yes, sir. and if all of our preachers had been together sitting in here doing the meeting, I wonder, say it, Bishop, say it. I wonder, would that woman be alive now? You got a right to wonder, Bishop. I wonder. Yes, sir. What's the matter with Zion? Yeah. Zion don't pray like she used to pray. Yeah. Zion don't walk like she used to walk. Yeah. Zion don't talk like she used to talk. Something wrong with Zion. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. Elijah. Yes, sir. Let them know there's only one hope. Yes, sir. One hope. We don't need no business sessions. Uh huh. We don't need to amend the Constitution. No, sir. Ain't gonna buy it by no way. <laughs> if you want to buy it by this, yes, that's the Constitution. Sir. That's the Constitution. Hear me, Mr. Chairman. If they want to buy it by this, they're not gonna buy it by that. No, sir. If a man won't obey the Bible, he's not going to obey your Constitution. And if we get right, this is the Constitution. It is holiness of hell. Including the presiding bishop is holiness of hell. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Elijah said we don't need all that. No, sir. We don't even need a three-day shut-in. Uh-huh. Just need a one-day crusade. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Let's meet up on Mount Karma. Yes, sir. Meet that. And I'm gonna give you top priority. Yes, sir. Because you got more on your program than I've got on mine. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. You got 450 participants you got to introduce. Yes, sir. And I don't have but one. Uh -huh. Then it takes you a little longer to get ready because you got to bring your God up on an ox cart. Yes, sir. And my God will be up there when I get there. Watch yourself, Mr. Watch yourself. Watch yourself. Yes, sir. So now y'all go ahead and take prime time. Uh-huh. You know what prime time is. Yes, sir. Preachers, you don't have to worry about these crooks taking prime time. Let them have it. Pharaoh's magicians had prime time, too. But Moses' snake ate theirs up. And when they got through with all their wiggling and giggling, and demonstrating with their lies, Yes. Cutting themselves with stones, messing around and tinkering around. Elijah just laid there and listened. Uh -huh. And after a while, Elijah started, you know, kind of what? Signifying. Signifying. That's yeah. a good word. Signifying. Thank you, son. Elijah said, uh, uh, maybe your God is a. Uh, a little harder hearing. Uh -huh. So call him a little louder. Yes, sir. Say it, Bishop. Say it. And they called louder. Yes, sir. And they didn't get any results. Uh huh. 
And then they said, well, I'll tell you what, maybe he's off on a journey. Yes, sir. He'll be back soon. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. And then after a while, he looked, he said, now the sun's going down now. Uh-huh. You all have had all day. Get out of the way. And he repaired the altar. Didn't he do it? Yeah. Put new wood. Hallelujah. And a new sacrifice. Yeah. Yes, sir. And then doused it down with 12 barrels of water. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. And said, the God that answers, not by tambourines, not the God that asks about symbols. No, sir. Not the God that even asks about dancing. No, sir. Not the God that answers by speaking in tongues. No, but the God that answers by fire. Let him be God. Let him be God. Yes, sir. Let him. That's what we need now. Let him. God to answer by what? Fire. God to answer by what? If you really believe that, shout fire! Now listen to this. Yes, sir. Baal's group had everything Elijah had except one. That's right. They really had more gods. Uh -huh. That Elijah had. Yes. They had an altar. Yes. They had a sacrifice. Yes, sir. They had wood. Yes. Right? Yes. But they didn't have any fire. Uh -huh. The world is aping with the church now. You can't find a hole in this church now about tamarines and guitars. No, sir. That's all past. All right. Yes, sir. You may end up anywhere following a tambourine. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, sir. You find folk beating tambourines on the head, and on the heel, on the hip, anyway. on the hip. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. But what we need now is not hip slappers. We need fire. Watch yourself, Mister. Watch yourself. You got it, Mister. I'm closing with this though. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Listen, babies. I had a, a real trauma. I know you won't know about it. So you will know what to say when you leave here. So best me tell you. Yes, sir. Now, because I had a real trauma, you stay sweet. And don't hurry. And whatever God's got for you. That's true, this is, that's true. You get it. You don't have to try to get more friendly with the folk now than you were. Say it, Bishop. Say it, Bishop. Because the folk know you're a hypocrite. And then, you know, can tell, I may preach somebody's funeral. Yes, Maybe like the late Bishop Johnson said in Michigan, they were all there in the meeting. And they were talking about what they were going to do and who was going to take over. Because Bishop Johnson was at home dying. Yes, yeah. And about that time, Bishop Johnson walked in yeah, and said, I ain't going to die. I ain't going to resign. <laughs> Just be sweet. See, because whoever clamors for the job won't get it. That is the way promotions come. Promotions don't come from the east, not from the west, not from the south. But God puts up one and takes down another.
And to hold this job, you got to love people, not dollars. I had a trauma. I was taken to the hospital. Couldn't sleep that night. I've been a tough man. I've been a tough man. Couldn't nobody have stood what I have stood these past 20 years if it hadn't been a tough man. Rugged. I just went to bed one night, couldn't sleep. Got me in the hospital early the next morning. Doctors said I got to make a picture. I said, well, hurry up because I've got to go. The April meeting's going on. That's a national meeting. I've got to be there. Made a picture. I said, am I ready to go? He said, I'm sorry, but you're not. We've got to make another one. I said, well, please hurry up. After a while, he said, I've got to admit you to the hospital. I said, no, not today. I've got to go to the April meeting. I'll come back next week. He said, but Bishop Patterson, you can't come back next week. You've got to be admitted now. Finally, I was operated on. It was found to be malignant. They couldn't move any part of it. They told me that it could be helped by chemotherapy. I won't go through all of that. They made an appointment for me to see the chemotherapist. But the same day that I was to see the chemotherapist, I made an appointment with, with the prayer meeting. And I called, I had, a, had, a, had to call up the chemotherapist and told him that I was going to take my treatments at another hospital. Thank you. And they said I could live maybe six months. If I took it, or if I didn't take it, I could live maybe six months, or, and maybe a month or so if, if I took it. But I said if I don't live but a day, I ain't gonna take it. Say it, Bishop. If God doesn't heal it, it won't be healed. And I had this one consolation, and this is all. It came to me about the man that lost his wife, young man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he had only a daughter left. Yes, sir. They buried her on a gloomy day and coming back from the cemetery, they were grieving. They went into a lonely house, just he and his little seven or eight year old daughter. With a broken heart, he put her to bed in her room and he went to bed in his room. A few minutes later, there was a figure in the door and he heard a voice saying, Daddy, are you asleep? He said, no baby, I'm not asleep. He said, Daddy, it's dark, isn't it? He said, yes, it's dark. Sweetheart, it can be dark at 12 o'clock in the day. <laughs> she said, Daddy, I haven't ever seen it this dark before, have you? He said, no, it's never been this dark before. She said, Daddy, I'm afraid. Can I come in the room and get in the bed with you? He said, yes. She got in the bed. She said, I can't see your face, Daddy. Is your face turned toward me? He said, yes, baby, my face is turned toward you. She closed her eyes and went to sleep. That was my consolation. It's dark. Never seen it. It's dark before. But thanks be to God. The Lord's face is turned toward me.
and just to behold his face. And my dears, who knows? Who knows why God gave me the strength to stand here and talk to you today? I don't care what it is. Thank you, Jesus. Last time I went to see the man that said I may could live six months, he was so amazed till he had the table out there for me to get on. When I got through talking with him, I was in the chair and had him on the table. Who knows? Say it, Bishop, say it. I don't care what your condition is. You may be a dope addict. Yes, sir. You may be a drunkard. Thank you, Jesus. Your home may be disintegrated. You may be a sinner lost. And the Lord is on his way back. I don't know when he will get here, but he's right around the corner. Yes, sir. The harvest is past, yeah. and you're not saved. So it's late. It's really about 13 o'clock. And this may well be your last opportunity. You may not have the wonderful gift of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to tell you. If you have the boldness to come down here and all over this building, yes, all sir. over this building, yes, sir. I want us to go back to God in a Holy Ghost renewal yes. before we leave out of this building. Today, I want every person in here to go back to God with us in a Holy Ghost renewal. You in the building that want to be saved, want to be filled with the Holy Ghost, want to be healed, want to be delivered, I want you to have the boldness to get up and come down here now. God had me to tell you this. God had me to tell you this. Get up and come down here now. We're going to straighten this thing out now. We're going to straighten it out now, right now. Get up and come on down here now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you. Spirit of the living God. Hey, 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 hey. That's it, that's it. Spirit of the living God.
listen to me. Listen to me. Don't you dare walk out that door until you shall have received a touch from God. There's nothing that you have to do that's more important than having your soul renewed and revived. Now listen to me. Now cry a little softer. Listen to me. We've heard a pastoral message. The bishop spoke to us from his heart. Said this could be the reason why the Lord is just keeping him here with us. Is there anybody here with enough boldness and honesty to repeat after me, oh Lord save me. 